Hey everybody, welcome to the final mini lecture of caffeine and nicotine. We're doing uh, mechanisms of action of caffeine this time. So let's get right into it. Where does caffeine work? Well, we have uh, the primary mechanism is through adenosine uh, receptors. But in addition to adenosine receptors, um, it produces blockade of GABA-A receptors and it stimulates uh, intracellular calcium release. Uh, but most importantly, it uh, produces blockade of adenosine A1 and A2A uh, receptor subtypes. So in typical doses, a uh, cup or two of coffee, adenosine is the only action that really comes into play. So you can see here, we've got some dose response curves for various mechanisms of caffeine intake. At um, a typical dose that your average person would be taking, this activates uh, A1 and A2A receptors of the adenosine. Um, only at, when you're reaching toxic doses or near toxic doses are you getting significant activation of these other means. Um, so we're not going to focus too much on these other means. Just know that at high doses, uh, caffeine can stimulate these other mechanisms. But most of that, uh, the good stuff that we get out of uh, taking caffeine comes from adenosine receptors. So what's adenosine? This is a really, really common molecule that does a lot of different things. So it's a structural or it's sort of a mundane component of a lot of cellular function. Uh, it's also part of ATP, um, which is a really common energy source for lots of cellular uh, processes. But we're not talking about intracellular adenosine. We're only talking about extracellular adenosine. So all of that stuff that we're going to be talking about is mediated by extracellular adenosine. And this comes from the breakdown of ATP, which is released from channels that are called panexins. So uh, after they're released from these channels, they are broken down via enzymes, and eventually they reach, uh, they're reach broken down far enough to free up adenosine, which can do its thing. So let's look at that a different way. So we have ATP inside of the cell uh, being released through this channel that we mentioned, the Panexin channel. Uh, now it's outside of the cell. Through the uh, mechanisms of a couple of different enzymes that we're not really going to talk about, it's converted first into ADP, then to AMP, and then adenosine is freed from that. And don't worry too much about all of this. Uh, do know that there are various receptors that respond to uh, molecules produced from different stages of this process. So we have P2X receptors, which have a binding site for ATP, as well as uh, P2Y receptors, which have a binding site for both ATP and ADP. Uh, but we're not talking about that because this is the caffeine unit. We're not talking about these systems. We're only concerned about the adenosine system. So we have adenosine receptors that are receptive to adenosine. So let's talk a bit more about those. There are four receptor subtypes, but we're focusing in primarily on A1 and A2A receptor subtypes because these are what are the targets of caffeine that are mediating most of the central effects that we're talking about. Uh, and a particular interest is the A2A receptor, which is located primarily on GABAergic output neurons of the dorsal striatum and ventral striatum. So we have these striatal neurons that are uh, putting out uh, GABA. These are also rich in dopamine receptors. And this is where it gets pretty interesting. Um, these don't just act on their own. They don't even act in an interaction in a way that we've talked about before. These A2 receptors, these A2A receptors, actually form what's called a heteromer with uh, dopamine D2 receptors. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what exactly that means. So this uh, heteromer mechanism is actually super cool. Um, the 2A receptor, so first off, a heteromer is basically just a, a complex of these two different receptor protein systems that interact together. They influence one another. So they're not acting alone. They form this sort of uh, complex, a heteromer. And I'll show a picture of that on the next slide. But for now, just know that they, these are sort of bound together and they influence one another. The 2A receptor uh, exerts allosteric influence over the D2 receptor. So when this happens, it actually reduces the affinity for dopamine and decreases the arousing and behaviorally affecting effects of dopamine. So adenosine, what it's doing sort of in its natural role is accumulating and binding to these heteromer complexes that are in, uh, messing with the way that dopamine can normally signal. So it's reducing um, the arousing and behaviorally activating effects of our naturally occurring dopamine. It's sort of like a feedback system. The more of this is adenosine that um, accumulates, the longer you've been awake, the more profound this effect becomes, leading to this sort of decrease of arousal and behavior activation. What caffeine does 
that it's an antagonist for these adenosine receptors. So it blocks adenosine receptors. What this means is with this sort of adenosine break removed from the D2 receptor, they are now enhanced. So because D2 signaling is normally inhibited by adenosine signaling, antagonizing adenosine receptors actually enhances dopamine signaling at D2 receptors. This produces mild arousal and psychomotor activation. So let's look at that a different way. Here we have um, a dopamine receptor, a D2 receptor. Uh, <clears throat> dopamine is binding to this D2 receptor and producing its effect. Uh, we're not going to go into detail about what D2 receptors do. If you need a refresher on that, you can go back to our dopamine unit. Um, you can see in this heteromer complex, we have an A2A uh, receptor coupled to it. What happens when adenosine binds, again, this naturally occurring substance, adenosine derived from ATP, when that binds to an A2A receptor, it exerts a sort of inhibitory influence on this. It reduces the binding affinity for this D2 receptor. So dopamine is binding less, and we have a reduced effect of our own dopamine signaling here, right? When our adenosine binds, it puts the brakes on the D2 receptor that it's bound to, reducing the effectiveness of dopamine. So what happens when we shove some coffee in here? Um, caffeine comes in and gets in the way. It's um, going to compete and bind to this site here, and which will prevent adenosine from binding and doing its thing. So if adenosine can't bind, then it can't dampen the effect of dopamine. So uh, it's enhanced, right? Because adenosine normally puts the brakes on. Without this adenosine, this becomes more active and looks a lot more like normal functioning. So let's put that all together. Uh, adenosine is this key neurotransmitter in the production of sleep. Adenosine levels in the basal forebrain are elevated during prolonged wakefulness. So as we're awake for longer, we see more of this adenosine accumulating. Caffeine blocks adenosine, so it's useful for promoting wakefulness. Again, through this mechanism that we talked about, when adenosine normally promotes the sort of uh, dampening of dopamine effects that promote arousal, when we remove that from the system, we're removing the brakes and allowing that arousal to continue at full strength. Okay. So that is the uh, nuts and bolts of how caffeine interacts with our adenosine system to promote wakefulness. Uh, that's it for our unit on nicotine and caffeine. See you next time.